Praise the Lord. Osho State, I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. It's a Bible study with a difference. With the power of God. With the supernatural. And the Lord is going to touch your life in Jesus' name. Please understand that we are going through a series in the Bible. And all the other Bible study locations are waiting. All over Nigeria. All over Africa. And beyond Africa. So you'll please uh, pardon us that we're speaking just in English only. Our Yoruba audience, they're already somewhere and the message is getting to them. And the Lord will bless every one of them in Jesus' name. Also, please understand, this passage of scripture is the next we're studying. And it just comes like this. And or show stage is having a, a great day today. Somebody there shout amen. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless me. I said the Lord will bless me. Something great will happen to you. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you tonight. We we'll bless your name for the Bible study. We're asking Lord tonight, you bless your people in Jesus' name. We pray that every word that comes out, every verse that comes out, will penetrate every heart, every life in Jesus' name. Let wonders follow the word. Let healing follow the word. Let deliverance follow the word. And let miracles attend to the message. Bless everyone here. And bless everyone listening everywhere. Confirm the word in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Ocean State can give me a greater amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Jude chapter 1 and i'm reading from verse 22 all through to verse 25 22 23 24 and 25 and on some have compassion making a difference and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh now unto him that is able to do to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever Amen. As we look at those verses I've read to you, you see something very clearly. We're talking about God. We're talking about Jesus Christ as Savior. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about what Christ can do in your life. And you look at verse 24. It says, Now unto him that is able. Tonight, our God is able. In your life, our God is able. Against your problem, our God is able. Against all the infirmities of your life, our God is able. You will see the ability and the authority and the anointing of the Lord tonight. It will roll away all your problems in Jesus' name. Now the verses I've read to you they give us the conclusion of the whole epistle. It's a very brief epistle. And yet, look at this. It talks about God the Father. It talks about God the Son. It talks about God the Holy Spirit. I'm reading from verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified 
by God the Father. He reveals God the Father to us. And then he goes on to say that we are preserved in Christ, in Jesus Christ and called. As he talks about God the Creator. He talks about Christ the Redeemer. Look at verse 20. And he says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. He talks about the Holy Ghost, a comforter. The Father, the Creator, the Son, the Savior. And then the Holy Ghost, he talks about him, is a comforter. He will help you today. And the epistle reveals, number one, that we are saved. Number two, that we are sanctified. Number three, that we are infilled, indwelt, baptized, immersed in the Holy Ghost. Look at what he tells us in verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, of the salvation available to everyone, salvation available to you, salvation available to me, salvation available to everyone here. He says, I'm writing to you, I'm speaking to you, I'm preaching to you of that salvation common to everyone. It will get to you today. I said it will get to you today. As it talks about salvation, it talks about sanctification. Come back to verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father. It tells us there's an experience called salvation. And then it tells us there's a second work of grace. That the grace of God comes to you. Not only that you are saved, that you are forgiven, it sets you apart. It makes you holy. It purifies you. It sanctifies you. And then it talks about the Holy Ghost. That it comes in your life. Number one, you are pardoned by the Lord. That's salvation. Number two, you are purified by the Lord. That's sanctification. And now it says, you can pray in the Holy Ghost. You are filled with the Spirit. You are saturated by the Spirit. You are immersed in the spirit. You are baptized in the spirit. And then you are not just praying with your understanding. Look at verse 20. It says, And ye, beloved, God will make you a beloved child of God. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, interceding in the Holy Ghost. Then he talks about what we receive. The Father blessing us, the Son blessing us, and the Holy Ghost imparting life unto us. And he talks about the mercy and the peace as well as the love. Come to verse 2. It says in verse 2, I'm reading Jude verse 2. It says, mercy unto you. The mercy of God will come to you. The mercy that forgives. The mercy that transforms life. And the mercy that changes negative things and positive in your life. It says mercy is coming. Somebody is a candidate for the mercy of God tonight. Why are you there? It says in verse 2, mercy and peace. He gives us peace when he pardons us. The sinner has no peace. There is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. But here we come. And we come to the Lord and the blood of Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, cleanses us, washes us. And because of that, all sins taken away, the guilt taken away, the condemnation taken away. And it says, peace unto you and love be multiplied. You see that? The mercy of God. The peace we get from God and the love we have from God. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish. I will not perish. I said I will not perish. You will not perish in Jesus name. And now he talks about that love. Whosoever. And you are that whosoever. That love is reaching you tonight. That love is turning your life around tonight. The mercy of God. The peace of God. And the love of God be multiplied unto you. And then the epistle is talking about number one, grace. Number two, godliness. Number three, it's talking about the glory of God. It says we can have the grace of God. 
and it is that grace of God that brings salvation unto us but he says don't misrepresent that grace don't misunderstand that grace and it says don't destroy that grace look at verse 4 it says for there are certain men crept in unawares who were ordained for the age of old to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God unto lasciviousness they misunderstand the grace of God but the epistle is here to tell us that grace is available it's also telling us apart from grace there is godliness and then he goes on to tell us there is glory God will bring abundant grace in your life godliness in your life and glory in your life in Jesus name look at verse 24 here in verse 24 now unto him that is able able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory then he says with exceeding joy you know i said this epistle is it's very brief and yet he's talking about a lot of things this epistle talks about believers on the one hand and he talks about backsliders on the other hand and he wants us to make a choice that i will be a believer i will remain a believer because there are backsliders too he tells us in a verses in verse 5 it says i will therefore put you in remembrance though ye first knew this how that the lord having saved the people those are believers when you are saved you become a believer when your sins are forgiven you become a believer when you have eternal life you become a believer and he says i want to remind you that he saved the people and when they became born again they became beloved look at verse 3 the first word there beloved look at verse 17 talking about the believers in verse 17 but beloved remember it tells us there are believers then it says there are backsliders i'm coming back to verse 5 how that the lord having saved the people out of the land of egypt afterwards destroyed them that believed not those people they believed for a while after, after that then they went back they believed not and they perished in the wilderness i will not perish somebody there say i will not perish you believe on the lord you become a beloved child of god a beloved son of god a beloved daughter of god and then you keep on and on and on if you continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and because there are sinners and because they're backsliders the piece is talking about judgment it says there is judgment to come and it tells us in verses 6 and 7 look at verse 6 and the angels which catch not their first estate but they left their own habitation he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great day it says judgment is coming and if you want to escape judgment that's why it says i'm writing to you of the common salvation of the salvation available for you of the salvation you can have today and the salvation can keep to the very end because a day of judgment is coming look at verse 14 and enoch also the servant from adam prophesied of this saying behold the lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all a day of judgment is coming who are the people that will be judged you tells us they are rebels and reprobates so the piece is talking about believers those who are righteous believers those who are redeemed believers those who are reconciled with god believers those who are restored into the grace of god is also talking about the rebels and the reprobates look at verse 10 it says but these speak evil 
of those things which they know not but what they know naturally as brute bees in those things they corrupt themselves one to them for they have gone in the way of Cain reprobates rebels and they have run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward reprobates rebels and they have perished in the gain saying in the opposition in the rebellion and in the conspiracy of Corey it talks about those who are ungodly those who are unfaithful and those who are unfruitful it's talking about all this so that you will know look at those people judgment came upon them look at those people the fire of God came upon them and bunched them up and he wants you to come to the side of mercy and to the side of peace and to the side of love that's why he's talking about all these people I said he spoke about the unfaithful and the ungodly and the unfruitful I want you to look at uh, verse 12 as you look at verse 12 it says these are spots in your feast of charity it says they feast with you when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear clouds they are without water what a tragedy carried about with winds trees whose fruits withereth without fruit twice dead plucked up by the roots raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars they are and it says to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever look at verse 15 to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners are spoken against him but now he talks about our steadfastness he talks about our supplication and he talks about our spirituality he says i've shown you all this so that you'll come out from among them and jude is telling us you can be steadfast you are going to be steadfast i said you are going to be steadfast jude is telling us you can make supplication to god you can pray unto god and all those negative things of the past it will roll them away in jesus name and then he says you can become spiritual look at verse 17 i was steadfast and but beloved remember ye the words which was spoken before of the apostles of our lord jesus christ remember those words and be firm remember those words and remain with the lord remember those words and live an uncompromising life and then he talks about our supplication and prayer in verse 20 but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying making supplication praying pleading with the lord play praying or in the Holy Ghost and then he talks about our spirituality in verse 21 keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life and I is talking about a soul winning a soul winning that is you become a believer you will do something that will bring other people into the kingdom it says on some verse 22 have compassion making a difference on some have compassion have compassion those who are perishing in sin those who are going astray you have the light you have the truth have compassion on the ignorant and bring them out of the ignorance of the wilderness of sin and bring them into the kingdom of god and then he talks about the second coming of the lord that the lord is coming and he wants to preserve us until that final day verse 24 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present your faultless before the press is presence the presence of his glory with exceeding joy christ is coming i pray you'll be ready somebody there said you will be ready 
when Christ comes to take his own people away and when the saints go marching in I will be there I said I will be there and then finally now he talks about the glory of God in verse 25 to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever and our should state people say Amen. As we look at the passage we are studying tonight, the final concluding verses of Jude chapter 1, verses 22 to 25, I'm going to teach you on our preservation in godliness until the final glory. Until the final glory. There's a glory to be revealed. There's a glory that comes when Christ comes and that glory will appear. He comes in the clouds and he comes in his majesty and dominion and power and glory. And he wants you. You have received the grace of God. You are in the kingdom already or you are coming to, king, in the, to the kingdom today. He wants you to remain preserved. He wants you to continue until that final glory. There are three things we're talking about. Number one, our dedication to preaching the gospel. Our dedication to preaching the gospel that you find in verses 22 and 23. Number two, the declaration of our preservation in godliness is declared that God is able, God is mighty, God is powerful. When you get saved, and you receive of the grace of God. He brings you to godliness. And he wants you to be preserved in that godliness until he comes. The power of God will keep you until that final day. I'm waiting for a good amen. What a wonderful thing it will be. That all of us who are here tonight. And all the people who join us at the Bible study. That when that time will come. That the Lord will have kept you faithful and fruitful. And firm, uncompromising the Lord. And then on that day, when his glory shall be revealed, I will be there, you will be there. We'll be there together in Jesus' name. The declaration of our preservation in godliness. Point number three, the dominion and the power of our God. Immeasurable, unthinkable, unimaginable. What you think about is dominion universal is dominion mighty is dominion majestic is dominion the dominion and the power unlimited power that's able to roll every mountain away and thank god you are here tonight say i am here tonight and tonight will be the night of the power of god moving all mountains away from your life in jesus name the dominion and the power of our God. I'm coming back to point number one. Do you, do you remember point number one? Tell me out loud. Our dedication to the preaching, to preaching the gospel. Let's come back to Jude chapter one. It says, on some have compassion, making a difference. That's what compassion, that means you have sympathy. That means you look at those who are hungry. They are hungry spiritually. You look at those who are deprived. They are poor. They are deprived. And they do not have the water of life. And you have the water of life. Give them to drink. They do not have the bread of life. They are hungry. They say, how can I be saved? How can I be strengthened in my life? How can I understand the gospel? And it says, have compassion on them in short is saying be like jesus christ he had compassion on those multitudes of people and because of that he witnessed to them he preached to them he healed them he delivered them we're looking at matthew chapter 9 matthew chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 35 and verse 36 on some have compassion on some have compassion matthew chapter 9 verse 35 it says and jesus went about all the cities and all the villages 
teaching in their synagogues he'll teach you today i said he will teach you today i'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom and then it goes on and healing every sickness and every disease among the people listen to this now but when he saw the multitudes when he saw the multitudes hungry people thirsty people sinful people oppressed people deprived people ignorant people when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion on them that's the word there because they fainted and they were scattered abroad a sheep having no shepherd that's why he was preaching to them that's why he was touching their lives that's why he's bringing the word to you tonight because he has compassion on you have compassion on them you know if you have the gospel if you have the truth and you hold it yourself you say i'm a believer thank god you are i know the gospel thank god you do and i'm a child of god thank god you are but then you're not telling your neighbor you're not showing them the light you're not showing them this is the way what key in it if you have the water of life and people are thirsty and you're not giving them the water you have the bread of life and people are hungry and you're not giving them the bread of life you have the good thing the good thing the good thing which mary has chosen and you're holding it yourself how do i let the love of god in you in first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 17 but whoso has this world's good and sees his brother have need and shortest up his powers of compassion from him you see your brother in need even of material things of physical things and you can you can give them to save their lives to make their lives more comfortable and to make their lives fulfilled and you hold everything to yourself it says how dwelleth the love of god the compassion of god in him how dwelleth the love of god in him share the gospel give out the gospel preach the gospel tell the people how they can be saved and through you through me and through us many will come to know the lord in jesus name somebody says amen over there i'm coming to jude verse 22 and verse 23 it says on some have compassion the question is why some i thought jesus died for all i thought salvation is available to everyone i thought jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature yes you are right let me first of all emphasize that that the gospel is for everyone that salvation is for everyone that jesus died for everyone i'm looking at mark chapter 16 verse 15 mark chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 15 it says in verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to tell me out loud every creature preach the gospel to every creature but jude is saying some why let me show you this we're looking at a sec at first uh, timothy in first timothy i'm reading from uh, chapter two first timothy chapter two salvation for everyone salvation for you salvation for me salvation for your parents salvation for your children salvation for the illiterate and salvation for the educated salvation for the high salvation for the low because except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god look at first timothy chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 3 it says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior listen to this verse 4 who will have all men to be saved he wants all men to be saved he desires all men to be saved who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge 
of the truth but now come to jude i'm reading from verse 22 jude chapter 1 verse 22 on some have compassion and then he says making a difference you know jude has been talking about many kinds of people and he said not everybody will listen not everybody will accept what you are saying and you are not a match to everyone as you look at all the people that jude has been talking about you understand look at verse 4 jude chapter 1 verse 5 verse 4 it says for there are certain men kept in unawares who before were ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our god into lasciviousness it says you may not be able to reach such people others can reach them maybe paul the apostle can talk to them but you cannot talk to them maybe a man like stephen can talk to them you cannot talk to them and maybe somebody like um, uh, somebody like apollos who was freak who was fervent in the spirit who knew the scriptures very well as they tried to turn it upside down say no that's not right there's the way that's the way of salvation but for the common believer for the average believer you may not be able to reach these people that's why he said there are people you can match there are people you can talk to there are people you can reach on some have compassion and it says making a difference what kind of difference look at jude i'm reading from verse 11. one to them for they have gone in the way of Cain, and they have run giddily after the error of balaam and they have perished in the gate saying of corey he said you know what there are many people who are just like Cain. even the almighty god has spoken to them and he said the sin offering is lying by the door go take it and make your sacrifice and the man will not answer god spoke to him and said where is abel your brother he said you're asking me about abel am i my brother's keeper and the people that can reply god like that he said they might confuse you if you go to them make a difference make a difference there are people that they know nothing they are ignorant and when you tell them the gospel they say i've been waiting for that and there are people like the uh, eunuch of ethiopia that uh, philip said do you understand what you read and the man said how can i understand except some should guide me he was not like him and it was not like balaam you know balaam he was riding the ass and then the ass saw the angel and turned this way and the balaam struck that uh, that ass and don't turn that way and balaam struck that ass and the ass began to talk and said why are you beating me what have i done don't you see what i see i'm trying to protect your life and then balaam spoke back and said he was not even surprised he was not even afraid that an ass was speaking to him in the language of man he said if i had a sword i will kill you and then the lord opened his eyes and he saw the angel and the angel said why are you beating your ass why it not for what the ass had done i would have killed you and i will spare that ass and then the man said an angel was talking to him your way is not right your way is perverse instead of repenting he said all right if you don't want me to go then i'll go back he wanted to go and jude is saying you may not be able to talk to people like balaam make a difference between the ordinary sinner and the terrible sinner who is going to argue now he says make a difference the people like Korah and Korah was a person in opposition to Moses and you know Moses the one that opened the Red Sea you know Moses the one that struck the rock and water came out for millions to drink you know Moses the one that lifted up the rod like this and then victory came to Joshua it was a man of prayer a man of power a man of grace a man of godliness a man of the supernatural in that generation there was nobody like Moses and Moses said Korah come he said no I'm not coming you make yourself a tyrant a dictator a ruler 
over the people. You tell me to come? Forget about that. I'm not coming. And Jude is saying, there are people like that, like Korah. They turn and Abiram. And you say, can I talk to you? Me? Get out of my sight. Can I share the gospel with you? It says gospel. Do I need the gospel? Come, come and look at this. No, I don't want to see. They close their eyes. They don't want to see. That's why Jude is saying, make a difference. Thank God the average person you see on the street will not be like that. Thank God the people you, you uh, confront, well, many of them will not be like that. But make a difference if you're trying to share the gospel. And somebody is arguing. And he wants to confuse you. And he wants to destroy even the faith you have. Then he says, make a difference. Go to the people you can talk to. There are so many people you can talk to. And leave that Cain alone. And leave that Balaam alone. And leave that Korah alone. We're coming back now. I'm coming back to Jude chapter 1. And I'm looking at verse 23. It says, others save with fear. What about that? Others save with fear. What do you mean by this? You see, the angels came to Sodom. And they told Lord, they said, Tonight, the Lord is going to rain fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah. You have anybody there? Very quickly, go and tell them. Go and tell them. Judgment is coming. And God wants you to be saved. And when he got there, they were arguing with him. They will, they will not listen to him and then the angel laid hold on their hands you don't have time to waste you cannot linger because danger is coming that's why it says go to them but be conscious that judgment is coming go to them be conscious you don't have too much time and save them with fear and it says pulling them out of the fire pulling them out of the fire you know what that means is that jude is already telling us that the fiery judgment is about to strike the fiery judgment is about to descend and the people you are talking to preach to them pray for them but do not be partakers with them because you are pulling them out of the fire and then it says hating even the garments spotted by the flesh hating even the garments spotted by the flesh i want you to look at uh, the word of god as it talks about their garments and their garments are spotted and their garments are defiling it's talking about some kinds of people let me show you second peter chapter two second peter chapter two i'm reading here from verse 14 having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin beguiling deceiving cajoling turning aside on stable souls and hearts they have exercised with covetous practices because the children it says when you meet people like that you want to win them into the light they want to get you into darkness you want to win them to righteousness and holiness and then they are behaving in a particular way they want to get you into adultery into fornication and into defilement into evil it says leave them alone they are not ready they are not ready you are trying to help them and pull them out of the well out of the dungeon and they are trying to pull you down into that same well of destruction that's why it says yes evangelize that's why it says yes talk to people that's why it's saying go everywhere and knock on their doors and talk to them but if they want to destroy you and you want to pull you back into evil and into condemnation it says make a difference and wait for them until they're ready i come to point number two now in point number two we're talking about the declaration of our preservation in godliness come to jude chapter one are you there i said are you there are you hearing what i'm saying the Lord will bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Give me a great, great Oshobo. Amen. I'm looking at Jude chapter 1 verse 24. It says now. Everybody say now. Your blessing is about to descend. Your blessing is about to come. And now it says now unto him. Unto him that is able. 
able to keep you from falling it will keep you in jesus name and to protect and to present you for grace before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy is talking about our preservation there there's there's a few things i want to look at here before i go to the concluding verse number one him that is able think about that him that is able number two able to keep you from falling as you come to the lord maybe you think you are not strong i cannot hold up i cannot go on resisting all the trials and the temptations how will i stand this god we're talking about as you get saved and if you are saved already the lord will keep you from falling i thought somebody there will say amen and then it says number three and to present you faultless and to present you faultless then it goes on before the presence of his glory and then it tells us with exceeding joy your life will become joyful your life will become happy give me a good day, amen let's look at them one by one i'm looking at verse 24 now unto him that is able my god is able i said my god is able there's no mountain he cannot move there's no problem he cannot solve there's no depravity he cannot remove there is no sinner he cannot save and there is no one he cannot satisfy because our god is tell me tell me out loud our god is able tonight it will show that ability in your life in jesus name look at uh, romans chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 21 romans chapter 4 verse 21 i'm being fully persuaded that what he has promised is able to perform our god is able as he promised to save is able as he promised to heal is able as he promised to deliver is able as he promised to break every yoke in your life is able as he promised to keep you from falling until the final day our god is able i'm looking at ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 and i'm reading to you from verse 20 our god is tell me our god is tell me out loud look at ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us that power is working here today is able to roll all your problems away he will do it in jesus name we're looking at hebrews hebrews chapter 2 in hebrews chapter 2 we're reading from verse 18 our god is able now unto him that is able in hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to succor them sustain them support them hold them up is able to succor them that are tempted when temptation comes to you remember our god is able our redeemer is able our savior is able our deliverer is able hebrews chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 25 hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them we're praying for you tonight and jesus is praying for you i said jesus is praying for you making intercession for them come back to jude in jude reading that verse 24 again and now unto him that is able able to present able to keep you from falling able to keep you from falling you know there are people that think if i get saved can i stand if i get saved can i be steadfast if i get saved can i live the life of righteousness 
the Lord will help you. The Lord will keep you. Because he's able to keep you from falling. He kept those who believed before us. And today his power has not changed. He will keep you from falling. I said it will keep you from falling. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 17 verse 12. Whilst I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. While I was with them, temptation came to them, I kept them. Trials came to them, I kept them. I kept them in thy name. And the same love he had for those disciples, that same love he has for you even now. And then he tells us in verse 13, Now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that thou mightest, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. Look at verse 14. It says, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. It says, you are not of the world. The powers of darkness in the world will not catch you, will not crush you, will not destroy you. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, look at this now, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil it will keep you from the evil because we're serving a god a god who is able a god who is able to keep us from falling how long will he keep us until he comes because come back to jude chapter 1 verse 24 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and then to present your faultless that's his goal that's his aim that's his desire and that's what he has power to do that he will keep you from falling and then he will present you faultless faultless how does he do that you need to understand we get saved our external sins are forgiven all the things we have done when you steal that's external you take something from somebody when you drink that's external you take that bottle external to your mouth when you smoke that's external when you become born again all those external sins they're forgiven it's like the branches of a tree all the branches of the tree they're cut off at the point of salvation and all the fruits there all the bad things there they're forgiven and cleared away but still the root of the tree the second step now is to uproot that thing. Take it away so that the thing inside you that wants to do evil, the thing inside you that will be attracting all those bad things to life again, the Lord will uproot everything. And every branch, the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life tonight, tonight, He will uproot them in Jesus' name. When God uproots, that root of sin, that depravity is called sanctification. And it is through that sanctification a holiness experience, it preserves you faultless until he comes. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 25. It says, Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for the church. That she might sanctify each. You see that? He wants to sanctify. That he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word. That he might present, that's the word, that's the word. That he might present he to himself a glorious church, not having spot or ego or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Holy without fault holy without spot that's what he does in fact he tells us in revelation chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 4 and verse 5 revelation chapter 14 and i'm reading here from verse 4 that he'll present us without fault without blemish without sin is able to do it the blood of jesus will wash you whiter than snow even from tonight in jesus name 
If you are there, give me a good day. Amen. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 4, it says, These are they which are not defiled with women. And then it says, For they are, for they are virgins and they are virtuous. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. Look at verse 5. And in their mouth was found no girl, no deception. For they are without fault before the throne of God. The Lord saves us by His grace. And the Lord sanctifies us and leads us into godliness. And then He says, He's able to present us faultless. When He comes, the Lord will do it for you. And then it says in that Jude chapter 1 verse 24, it says, before the presence of his glory, before the presence of his glory, we're waiting for him, we're expecting him. And when he comes, what glory that will be. And then Paul the Apostle tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, here I'm reading from verse 18. What the Lord did for Paul, he'll do for you today. Are you there? I said what the Lord did for Paul, he'll do for you today. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18, it says, And the Lord shall deliver me. Say it for yourself. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Let me hear you. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen and then he tells us when that happens there'll be exceedingly great joy great joy your life will be a joy your family will experience that joy your victory will bring that joy it tells us in first peter chapter three chapter four First Peter chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 13. First Peter chapter 4, verse 13. But rejoice. Somebody there, rejoice. I said rejoice. In as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye shall be glad also with exceeding joy. You keep standing until that time. You keep serving the Lord until that time. And He will preserve you in godliness until He comes. Until the final glory. I come now to point number three. Point number three, we're coming to Jude chapter 1. And in verse 25, Jude chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 25. It says... To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And everybody said, look at now, he's talking about the dominion and the power of our God. The God was served, a God of dominion. A God of majesty, a God of glory, a God of power. With him, all things are possible. That power will be manifested in your life even tonight before you go in Jesus' name. He has power to save. He has power to heal. He has power to deliver. He has power to set you free. Those blind eyes will get opened. Those lame legs will rise up and walk. The deaf will hear. The dumb will speak. Impossibilities will be possible in your life in Jesus' name. What kind of God is this that we're serving? Number one is the only wise God. The only wise God. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 17. Always remember that. Whatever happens in your life, take it back to God. 
take him back to God because the only wise God he has the wisdom to solve all your problems he has the wisdom to show you the way he has the wisdom to unravel and to lose every yoke in your life that wisdom will operate in your life tonight in Jesus name first Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 now unto the king eternal immortal and an invisible the only wise God you see that Paul is telling us the same thing that Jude has been saying that whatever problems you have he has the wisdom to solve it it's only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever amen and now he says as you look at Jude and Jude is telling us number one to the only wise God number two God our Savior God our Savior there's no salvation in any other that salvation is here tonight he said the Lord Jesus Christ and God is our Savior tonight it will save you in Jesus name for Timothy chapter 2 in first Timothy chapter 2 God our Savior God our Redeemer God the one that takes us out of the pit of sin and it brings us to the palace of the king we're looking at first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 but this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior God our Savior he forgives he cleanses he washes our sins away and he says it is good in his sight because it's God our Savior who will have all men to be saved thank God salvation is for you tonight forgiveness is for you tonight the mercy of God is for you tonight the grace of God will flow into your life tonight in Jesus name whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and it says so will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth then Jude is telling us something let's come back let's come back now to Jude and I'm reading here from verse 25 number one is the only wise God number two is the God our Savior and then it says be glory is the God of glory and is the Lord of glory and because the Lord of glory glory is coming to your life tonight somebody there said glory is coming to your life tonight but you know you must do something you must do something you cannot just sit there and cross your leg and fold your hands and just stay there and say okay god of glory where are you whatever you want to do you have something to do and when you do what he has told you to do that glory will come into your life shame will vanish away sorrow will vanish away I'm waiting for somebody to say amen over there. Calamity will vanish away. And all the suffering will vanish away. Glory is coming to your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's in Psalm 24. Psalm 24, I'm reading from verse 7. Lift up your head, so ye gaze. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. You have to do that. It says, you open the door of your heart, the gates of your life. Swing them wide open and say, God of glory, King of glory, Lord of glory, the Father of glory. I'm waiting here. And that's why Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come in to him. Somebody there will open the door to Jesus today. And then he's the king of glory. When he enters in, all shame will go out of your life. He tells us in verse 9, lift up your heads. O ye gates, even his, he tells us that we should lift up our heads. And he says, uh, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, that this the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? is the lord of hosts he is the king of glory he's coming to your life today i said he's coming to your life today open the door and you're coming you know what jude, what a jude is saying number one is only wise god number two is a god our savior 
Number three is the king of glory. And then it says, number four is the God of all majesty. The God of all majesty. In his majesty, what does he do? In his majesty, what does he want to do in your life even tonight? I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of majesty on high he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high after he has done what after he has purged our sin and tonight he will purge your sin i said he will purge your sin there is no sin so deep there's no sin so black there's no sin so terrible that the god of glory cannot take away because he specializes in pardoning us is the god of love and he purges our sins and he takes everything away and then he manifests his majesty and glory he will do it in your life in jesus name come back here now to judge and i'm reading from chapter 1 verse 25 it says number one to the only wise god number two the god our savior number three be glory number four and majesty number five and dominion and dominion you know what jesus christ our lord has all majesty and glory and dominion revelation chapter one verse five and from jesus christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us jesus loves you i said jesus loves you god loves me this i know for the bible tells me so unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto god and to his father to him be glory and uh, majesty and the uh, dominion forever and ever somebody there said forever and ever he has dominion not only that come back to jude i'm looking at it from verse 25 it says in verse 25 jude verse 25 number one to the only wise god number two the god who is our savior number three be glory number four be majesty number five be dominion number six tell me tell me out loud tell me out loud power that passes power power that will break every yoke power that will destroy the works of the devil power that roll that will roll all your mountains away tonight there is power are you there i said are you there and that power will work in your life in jesus name we're looking at ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 20 now unto him that's able to do with sinning abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us that power will work in your soul will work in your spirit will work in your body will work in your family will work in your profession will work in everything surrounding you tonight in jesus name that power will roll your bodies away that power will cleanse your sins away that power will heal your sickness tonight that power will take care of every problem in your life tonight in jesus name that power is now, now is coming your way i said it's coming your way he will save you he will heal you he will deliver you tonight is the night that power will walk in your life in jesus name i'm coming back to jude verse 25 jude verse 25 here it tells us to the only wise god the god who is our savior be glory 
and majesty and dominion and power tell me the rest both now and ever both now tonight I said now tonight I said now tonight you will manifest that power now and tomorrow and next week and next month and for the rest of your life forever and ever that power will never stop in your life tonight something great is going to start in your life and then that scene will continue and remember it says now and ever now and ever everybody say that now and ever tell me out loud now and ever salvation now and ever i said redemption now and ever i said my healing now and forever deliverance now and ever the supply of all your needs now and ever is going to happen i said it's going to happen philippians chapter 4 Philippians chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 19 but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus I thought somebody there will say amen I'll give you another chance but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus verse 20 now unto god and our father be glory forever and ever amen that amen will be fulfilled in your life the goodness of god will come into your life salvation there'll be an amen to your salvation healing there'll be an amen to your healing deliverance there'll be an amen to your deliverance miracles there'll be an amen to your miracle power there'll be an amen to the part that works in you it will start right now where are you i said where are you it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed the goodness of god is about to start in your life he wants to forgive your sin to start with. He wants to change your life to start with. He wants to bring light to your darkness to start with. Is a God our Savior. God our Savior. He'll forgive you. He will cleanse you. He has glory. He has power. He has dominion. He will turn your life around. And as you bow your head and close your eyes, if you want Him to manifest that grace in your life, and to pour in that love in your life and to save you and to change your life to give you forgiveness redemption and also to give you their salvation wherever you are you raise up your hand raise up your hand where are you there and say yes lord i'm the candidate for that salvation i want that forgiveness i want you to manifest your glory and your grace and take all my shame and take all my punishment and take all my sin take everything away raise up your hand if you are there i want that salvation i want that grace i want that love of god i want the glory of god to come into my life if you are raising up your hand you will stand up if you are raising up your hand you will stand up thank you god bless you god bless you you're raising up your hand you will stand up you say lord here am i here am i here am i i want that salvation i want that redemption i want that forgiveness stand up wherever you are and say lord i believe you remember it says it's god our savior god our savior and he wants everyone to be saved he wants you to be saved and you, as you are standing up, open your mouth and talk to the Lord. And say, Lord, I need that salvation now. I need that forgiveness now. Change my life. Let your glory come into my life. Let your grace come into my life. Open the door and the King of glory will come in. Open the door and the King of glory will come in. Say, Lord, I know you are knocking at my door. I know you want to forgive me. I know you want to change my life. I know you want to purge me and preserve me unto your heavenly kingdom. I open the door. Come in, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. 
and tell him i'll not go back into darkness anymore i'll not go back into evil anymore i'll not go back into those dirty things anymore i give my heart to christ he is my savior he is my lord and i know you will preserve me until the final glory as we're standing up there, raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. Yes, God bless you. Raise up that hand. You're standing up. Raise up that hand. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for our new brothers and sisters. I thank you, Lord, because you have said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I bring all these brothers and sisters before you. Forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Turn their lives around in Jesus' name touch them pardon them and take all the condemnation of their sins away from them in jesus name have dominion over them control over them bring your majesty to bear in their lives in jesus name let your glory king of glory let your glory come to them right now in jesus name confirm that forgiveness confirm that salvation and let your grace now uphold them to be steadfast, to be spiritual, and to be single-minded, following you until we see you face to face in glory. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation. Thank you for eternal life. And thank you because they have come into the kingdom, they will remain in the kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Another amen. Keep on standing, brothers and sisters. Those who are standing up, keep on standing. A counselors will come to you there. And they'll reach out to you. And they'll take, uh, you know, those uh, simple instructions. They'll give you those simple instructions. Comply with that. And when you finish that, in a few minutes, I'll be coming back to pray with you. And the power of God will break every yoke in your life tonight in Jesus' name. We we'll call on our state of us here. Uh, Pastor, go to you to please come and uh, direct us in this counseling session. I rejoice with you because you have come into the kingdom of God. The paper in your hand, fill it properly. Write your name if you can write. If you cannot write, the counselors will assist you. Give us the correct address. The name you are known. your GSM number or the description of your house if there is no house number if you can write write that by yourself but if you cannot write the counselor will assist you provide the necessary information on that sheet given to you it will help us to assist you to grow to know the Lord the more we appeal to our counselors to please say, do that on time and make sure you reach to everyone don't go away because tonight you are going to experience dominion and the power of the almighty don't go with your problem don't go with your sickness Counselor, you have to do that very quickly. Our overseers, group pastors, please help us to supervise as we have demarcated the pavilions into various uh, regions and so on. Let's move in there and get this done on time. Those of you in the pavilion, please. Uh, Let's do that on time.
Don't go away. Receive your miracle before you go. Please, converts, don't take the sleep away. But they will give you a package. The pastor's letter written to you that you continue in faith, in fellowship with the children of God. And this coming Sunday, we are going to have Believers Rally, Believers Fellowship. The addresses have been written there in the bag and the packet that is given to you. Time is 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. in some regions. So check the one that is appropriate to you and attend so that we can help you. Counselors, you have a very limited time to do that. Don't go away until you get another touch from the Lord. You have got the first touch. The second touch is coming, which is your miracle. You have got the touch of salvation, sanctification. Now, the next touch is touch from above to touch your life, touch your sin, touch your sickness. Unto him that is able. Unto him that is able. Wait for him. Wait for the power to be demonstrated in your life. Counselors, please uh, do that on time. Our Father and the Lord is waiting for us. If they have not attended to you, can you please raise up your hand and let us know. Those of you at the main bowl or this football field, can you raise up your hand? If you have not been attended to, Okay, you have almost covered that. I can't see most of you at the pavilion, but please do that on time. If you have not been attended, can you raise up your hand so that the counselor can get to you on time? Don't take the sleep away. The information on the sleep will help us to help you how to continue in the Christian race and your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. In the language section, please do that. Get the people who go Yoruba. In those language sections, please do that on time. Behind the pupil chair, those of you are there, please uh, attend to them. Those are the car park. Please, cancel us, get there. Please can you wave your hand if you have not been attended to. Please round off what you are doing now. But stay there. Don't come. Uh, counselors, remain where you are. After the pastor's uh, miracle prayer, you bring the people that you know, have uh, testimonies and so that they can share their testimony with the people of God before they go tonight. Stay where you are. Don't come back. Stay exactly where you are. Uh, those are the pavilion. You will help them because the entrance is by the uh, pop, I mean this uh, VIP side. That's where we have the opening into the football field. Please uh, assist those people to come out and give their testimony as soon as they receive their miracle. Please return the slave to the counselor. I said, don't take it away. Return the slave. And counselors, don't forget to collect the slave back from them. Yes. 
are we true with them cancel us yes okay thanks praise, for miracle praise the lord ocean state i said praise the lord power is coming upon your life the majesty of the lord is coming in jesus name those blind eyes get ready to get open and begin to see those who are lame get ready to jump out of that wheelchair throw those crutches away the power of god is coming upon your life right now our god is able my god is able my god is able what are you my god is able able to heal able to deliver able to set free we will pray that to that god of power right now and then when you hear the final amen that miracle would have happened you check up yourself you see the miracle there after the final amen it's not the time to begin to pray and pray and pray again it's the time to thank god it has happened and then you check up yourself you'll find your miracle is there i will receive i will receive i said i will receive raise up your hand for your miracle and lay the other hand upon yourself father in the name of jesus we thank you for your glory we praise you for your dominion we praise you for your power we praise you for your majesty you are a god who is able and tonight we bring everybody before you and you show your anointing and your ability and your authority and your power upon everyone in jesus name all that spirit of madness and insanity i command you come out in jesus name every swelling in your body at the back in the tummy in the neck in the legs any fibroids any tumor any swollen head i command all that swelling come out in jesus name all the incurable diseases cancer be healed in jesus name also be healed in jesus name asthma be healed in jesus name tuberculosis be healed in jesus name all that pain in your body be healed in jesus name lord i pray anyone carrying any long-standing sickness there touch them right now manifest your dominion manifest your power manifest your glory heal them in jesus name I pray for those who are, who are uh, deaf and dumb. Lord, I pray those deaf ears right now open in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues speak out in Jesus' name. All the hindrances to your speech, they're taken away in Jesus' name. All the impediments to your speech, they're taken away in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are blind. Glaucoma, I command you come out in jesus name cataract i command you come out in jesus name all the dimness of sight whatever is covering your eyes like bandage the bandage of the devil get out in jesus name lord give them their vision give them their sight i pray lord they will see clearly at this time in jesus name I pray for those who have any broken bone there. Lord, touch their bones. Heal them right now in Jesus' name. And those who have one leg shorter than the other, that short leg I command you, grow out in Jesus' name. One hand withered or both hands withered, I pray that life will come to those arms and those hands in Jesus' name. Those who have stroke, Lord, touch them at the very center of that stroke. That they will rise up and they will walk normally hands will be all right feet will be all right and they'll stand erect without any support in jesus name i pray lord for those who are paralyzed or lame in any way whatever is the cause of that lameness or paralysis take it away in jesus name 
let your power come into them let your anointing break every yoke rise up and walk in jesus name lord i pray that everyone here will receive their miracle nobody will miss their miracle in jesus name to the right to the left to the center to the back perform your miracle upon everyone in jesus name god of all power manifest your power god of all glory manifest your glory god of majesty and dominion manifest your dominion your majesty in jesus name confirm your power in everyone we know that you have done it there will be shout of hallelujah there will be shout of miracle there will be shout of deliverance there will be shout of healing confirm it in every life i thank you because i know it is done in jesus name we pray praise the lord it is done i said praise the lord it is done you are healed in jesus name those blind eyes can now see those lame legs can now rise up and walk you talk to the deaf and the dumb they will hear they will speak you talk to the person you brought in chase because they were mad they have been released now miracle everywhere you have got it and you have the shout of joy as you discover your miracle It is done. The miracle is there. Check up, check up. Counselors, as is dead. Check up. As soon as you see the miracle done, just come out. Our overseers, group coordinators, said our leaders go into their meetings and uh, I mean come out to help them and uh, interview them. Please bring them out from the pavilion, from the main bowl here, from the right, from the left. Bring them out so that they can testify of the power of God. You are living here as somebody that have dominion tonight. You have got your dominion. Come out. The miracle is there. Don't cover the goodness of the Lord. It's happening there. It's happening right, left, center there. Are you there? Our overseers, please help them as they bring them out. Interview them. Make sure that you properly interview them. Come out, come out, come out and testify. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. He has touched you. Check up there. The miracle is there. The miracle is there. Because God has demonstrated his power in your life tonight. Come out, come out and testify. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is evident that tonight God has touched you. Bring them out. Bring the lame that is walking. The one that cannot see, the now that can see. Bring them out. Yes, over there. There's a shout of joy. At my right hand there. Over there. Yes. Come out. Come out and testify. We are waiting for you. Check it up. Check it up. Check it up. The Lord has done it. God has visited you. Don't hurriedly go home. Come out, come out and testify. Please uh, start to interview them. Bring them out. Bring them out from the pavilion, from the maple, from outside the stadium, everywhere that the miracle has happened. Please bring them out. We are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. People are waiting to hear your, the, the goodness of the Lord to us you tonight. It is done. It is done. Our overseers, please uh, start to interview them. Line them up as to confirm the miracle. Yes, over there. Over there on the left hand side, people are jubilating there. Come out. Yes, come out. I can see somebody walking straight now. There's a shout of joy over there. Yes.
please our counselors interview the our leaders interview them bring them out bring them out bring them out the first testifier please we are waiting for the first testifier interview them please interview them we are waiting for them we want to share the joy with them don't go home yet the miracle is there it's happening there come out and testify we are waiting to listen to your testimony i can somebody there walking yes come out and testify the lord has touched you the lord has touched you waiting for you waiting for you Please uh, interview them. We are waiting for the moderator, please, to come up and uh, prepare himself. We want to take the first testimony. Please, uh, Electro, if you can use Pastor Shaw. We are waiting for you. Bring them out. Don't go home without testifying of the miracle of God that has wrought in your life tonight. Come out, come out, come out and testify. Spectacular testimony, spectacular miracles has happened there tonight. God of miracle, God of power has touched you. Don't forget the believers rally coming up this coming Sunday. As the address has been put into your believers package that is given to you. The first testifier. Please uh, bring out the uh, yes. spectacular testimonies. Bring them out, bring them out so that they can testify. You can go ahead, please. Give her this mic.
It is your turn to testify tonight. Another testifier, please. We are waiting for you. Another testifier. Spectacular miracles. Spectacular miracles. It has happened there. Check up before you go. Testify to the glory of the Lord. And let us rejoice with you. Please I'll keep on interview there. We are waiting for you. Pastors interview them thoroughly and make sure that They give you the right information. Check out there. The Lord has touched you. because crutches own team you oh praise the lord now i can walk without the help of any crutch praise the lord praise the lord the young man had an accident some time ago and since then he had not been able to walk without crutches in fact according to him he was using two crutches or under his two arms. But tonight, he dropped the crutches and he started walking for the first time. We praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord! It is your Another turn to testify. Please. We are waiting for you. The power of God is said they are walking. Check up. More testifiers. Praise the Lord. Modupe ni owo Olorun ni yo lu dare ni oruko mi. Lati year 2010 November ni moti ni accident. So since then I'm unable to walk without the stick. So mon lati igbaye mi le rin. Lai se bi a pe mu ko igisi abia. So mon modupe fun Olorun ni asale. Ni abe se ran se baba mi WF kumuyi. 
mo du pe pe mo gba ewo san yi ni pipe ti mo de gba wo pe mi ni pada si eni ti o lo gi mo ni oruko jesus so shall it be in jesus name amen praise the lord this is another man who received the supernatural touch of god the two crutches with which he used to walk you can see him holding the two crutches with his two hands now the lord has done it for him and he will do it for you also in jesus name another testifier please don't forget the believers rally is coming up on sunday 14th by 2 p.m and 3 p.m on sunday 14th by 2 p.m and 3 p.m in our regions check up the address that is very close to you praise the lord the woman has stiff neck as a result of uh, some uh, sickness a kind of illness but right now after the prayer of the man of God, you can see her, she can move the neck, and according to her, she was not even able to eat properly. Now, she can eat, she can feel no pain in the neck, and we praise the name of the Lord for that. Praise the Lord! The next Another testifier. testifier, please. Shake up. The power of God is still working. It's at work. We are waiting for you to testify to the goodness of the Lord. Le <laughs> Oh, not on your foot. Oh, till long. Hallelujah. We're not a day, lay low. Mama, we're not a day, he lay low from a fraud. In the name of the Lord, because general pains all over the body, the Lord has removed. And according to her, she was having difficulty in walking. The eye was dim. But now the eye can see clearly, as you can see, she walked up to this place by herself without any aid, without any support. Praise the name of the Lord! Hallelujah. We are waiting for you, the next testifier. My name, my name is Mary Oleyede. I'm from Oshodohe. I bless God when I heard the announcement that our daddy in the Lord is coming to Shodo. I was so happy because it's been long I've been under his administration. So I told my neighbors and I came. For the past two days I've been having severe pain on my right knee. I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything, I was just on bed. 
even to go to the toilet i would need support of people around me i came here limping with the support of my husband but i thank god you can see me i can run i can jump how glory to god praise the lord Praise the Lord! Will do it for you. One day I want to show you I'm saved. Now you are saved by the special grace of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to thank God for what He has done tonight. Shall we rise up and praise the name of the Lord? Let's thank God. Let's praise the name of the Lord for what He has done tonight. Everybody.